And they gave us a special treat, and they put it in our laundry and in our, everything we own, our bed and everything. And what this this was is uh, something that uh, it's either an insect or it's some sort of nanotechnology. Basically, it flits around, jumps all over you, and wiggles and whatever, and goes into your skin and makes your skin all red like mine is. Um, my hands and everything burned and dry and red and uh, you know, it does this to you. <laughs> this makes you look uh, like I do. And uh, they put this stuff into our thing and it's it's unkillable. Let's put it that way. Um, that's why I don't think it's alive. Well, there's many reasons. Uh, it, it's, it's horrible. And, and it seems to be self-replicating so that there can be so much of it that the room fills up almost like with a mist of this stuff and it's jumping on flitting and in your ass and it's in your ears and your mouth and your eyes and your nose and, and everywhere, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> first of all, it's unkillable. Oh, it's not visible with the naked eye. Okay, it's small enough to be microscopic, so it's very hard to get samples of. I'm going to try getting some samples with some clear tape. I found that works pretty well, and you can put it under the microscope. Um, so it flits around. It's unkillable. We've tried bug sprays. We've tried, you know, we spent thousands of dollars, literally thousands of dollars on bug sprays, cleaning products, uh, you know, let me just go through the list. So we tried all the bug sprays. We tried the roach spray, and the flea spray, and the bombs, and the, the you know the pyrethrins and the papyrinol butoxide, and the uh, the list goes on and on. We used the thing that that stops the the DNA from going, so it interrupts the life cycle. And all these things. None of them had any effect, or very little effect at all. Uh, then we tried cleaning products. We tried bleach. We tried ammonia. We tried uh, pine oil. We tried lemon oil. We've tried cedar oil. We've tried uh, menthol. We've tried um, that white. Uh, whatever it's called, that they use the Indian people burn it and put it in food. It's white and it smells sort of like menthol, not eucalyptus. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, lavender. We've tried so many things, and all of these things only seem to do a tiny bit. Covering everything in oil seems to help. Covering yourself in oil and everything in oil. Uh, poor Petra, she scrubs the entire house every day. We do, like, the laundry every three days. I mean, we wash everything. You wear your clothes until they're jumping all over. You have to take them off and put them in the laundry. And you're laying in your bedding. Your bedding is infested. And you put it, you know, any place that you clean gets reinfested within a moment's notice. But here's the thing about this. Sometimes it goes away. Sometimes it's as if they turned off a switch and it stops and it doesn't flit on you or it's not there and you know you have a moment. To Sometimes I can be sitting next to Petra and they'll be all over me and you know, all over my face and my hair and my butt and, and, and they're not on her at all. And we're kissing and hugging and whatever. Other times, they'll be all over her, but they're not all over me. Or it goes back and forth, switches back and forth. Sometimes it's on both of us, sometimes it's neither of us, sometimes it's me, sometimes it's her. Sometimes it's okay. So, it seems to me that this must be a technology-based thing. Um, it seems like a bug, it acts like a bug, and it probably has some sort of life cycle thing to it where it self-replicates. However, insects follow a very specific gestation, gestation period. You know, they have sex, uh, they lay eggs, eggs are fertilized, they have a certain time, they have to incubate or whatever, and then the eggs hatch, and the, the insects come out, and they're larvae, and then the larvae grow to the next stage, the pupa, or whatever, and the next stage, and the next stage, until they're adults, and they do it again. And this for every type of insect, has a very specific, I'm going to try to stop bouncing around so much I get excited, I'm sorry, has a very specific time period. And this stuff that we're infested with does not seem to have any time period. It does what it wants when it wants, regardless of the cleaning or the whatever. And it seems as though if it was left unchecked, it would just grow to tremendous proportions. But 
even when it's cleaned every day, when everything is washed and everything is, it, it seems like some sort of Morgellons related thing. But I believe that it is frequency dependent. I believe there is a, a, a signal, a code, say, from a satellite, a microwave signal that, that can beam, beam onto this stuff and tell it when to begin self-replicating. Uh, the same field, uh, the field, there's, you know, the same electromagnetic field could be used to make them hop around, jump around, or maybe they're designed to jump around. Maybe they're designed to search for CO2 so they find a living, breathing organism, and they do. maybe they're DNA specific. Maybe they only bite me and her. You know, because there's been times where we've been with other people and they should have been covered in this stuff, but no, they didn't even know it was there. They didn't see it. They didn't feel it. When they were told about it, they had no idea. And yet, we're got it jumping all over us. I don't believe that it is simply a mind-controlled illusion or a, or a, a um, virtual reality. You know, I went through that because they did actually cover us with bugs and more and so it would be possible to, through remote neural monitoring, uh, record our thoughts, experiences, feeling, nerve impulses of the bugs jumping all over us and then play that back to us so that we feel like this is happening all over again. And yes, I do believe that that's part of what the mind control does. There's like Photoshop templates of emotions that you can switch back and forth between. Anyway, that's another subject. It's very complex. We'll get into that. Um, Anyway, the whole reason I'm telling you about these little, tiny, horrible, annoying things is that they're driving us insane. You know, I have sort of learned to, like, lay there and let them jump all over me and kill me because I'm giving up my life. I, I've lost control. I'm sick. I'm dying. They're killing me. And, you know, there's really not much I can do about it. So I'm just trying to accept it. Uh, Petra, however, takes the view that uh, I can't have these things in my life. They're driving me crazy, and if I don't get rid of them, I'm going to go insane. So that makes it very difficult because now she's working her ass off night and day and day and night. I mean, she's working until she's gaunt and thin and her hands are bleeding. And it, it's, it's horrific to see her struggling so hard to clean something that, in my opinion, may never we may never be rid of. You know, we were almost rid of them in the last house. They basically just jumped all over me. And I just sort of kept my mouth shut about it because I didn't want her to be too upset. And, and they'd only drive me crazy most of the time. But I take medication and, and I, you know, look what this is doing to me. Um, it's doing this to her too. She's struggling. And, and we get into fights over it because she wants to change the bedding and make the bed and wipe the bed down with a sponge and wipe the walls down with a sponge and wipe the ceiling down with a sponge and spray out my clothes, take off my clothes and change my clothes and spray my body down, then take a shower and, and, and change everything, put the thing away and change the bedding, change the sheets, change the pillowcases, change the everything. And then we do that and then it's still jumping all over. Then we got to wipe the cat down, we got to wipe the floor. This, I mean, listen, I'm sick. I'm really sick, and I've lost all hope, and, uh, you know, really, I have very little, I can barely lay in bed and be sick and die, you know, it's so, it's horrible, and this poor woman, she's struggling so hard, and I get in her way with my blah, 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 just leave me alone, all I want to do is sleep, I'm so sick, you know. I wish that I had the energy that I had before. I wish, I mean, I would stay up for days. I would take medication if I had to, to work my ass off to get this done, to, to pack everything, to move everything, to clean everything. I mean, we used to spend hours and hours and hours cleaning and cleaning. And we didn't know back then what was really going on, that this was something they were doing to us. That when we moved into this house, uh, Petra spent two months, I know I've told this in another video, cleaning, washing clothes and everything, packing things in plastic to make sure that just in case we had anything over there, we wouldn't bring it to the new house. And we get to the new house and within a couple of days we're just covered in this stuff again. And I don't think there's any way that that much stuff could come out of what we had before. Maybe it can. Maybe just flip that replicating switch and we're at a better satellite angle now because the sky is here and there's no big bricks between us and their satellites. Uh, perhaps that's one of the reasons why the emotional torture, mind control, and this stuff is... So anyway, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm at my wit's end sometime. 
as you can see by looking at my face, uh, what this has done to me. I don't know if anyone of you have seen pictures of me before, but I look uh, 10, maybe 15 years younger, and a hell of a lot he healthier. You know, I didn't have the two different size eyes really yet, and my head wasn't all sunken in. And I, you know, I did have this weird thing on my skull, but I didn't look like a concentration camp victim yet. Uh, it's almost like there's two sides to me. And I wonder if what they're doing has anything to do with this whole split brain thing. They're doing some really horrific stuff. Um, my thing is that I get this high-pitched, high-frequency, screaming, ringing, 10 kilohertz tone in my ear. Oh, in my head. It's not actually in my ears. It's it's in my head. And um, actually, I could have done that a different way. Uh, the sound is in my head, and you can't turn it off. Uh, uh, I'm gonna smoke a, uh, you know, a roll your own cigarette now. So you'll have to excuse me. Um, anyway, the sound is in your head. 